Hi right, guys. It is actually starting to feel like January here in January. Imagine that uh, here in the Point Lonesome Swamp in the oasis of freedom on this quickly chilling. It is Thursday night, uh, January 13th, uh, I believe 2022, guys. So I am getting ready to do something probably against my better judgment. Uh, and this is part of a just, I, I, I've just been thinking about where to go with this channel, Collapse Chronicles. I'm feeling a little bit in what uh, my buddy Michael Sleva calls the echo chamber of the Doomosphere. So we might start opening up this channel to a little more controversial ideas. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to stick my little toe into it and see what we get. So uh, anyway, <clears throat> I am uh, a little bit nervous about the uh, video I'm, I'm getting ready to put up. I mentioned a couple of days ago that my hero Paul Kingsnorth has penned the single best analysis of what is going on, not so much with the, uh, whether we want to call it the C word, for a while it was called the D word, now it's called the O word, and certainly the V word, but you know what we're talking about. Uh, but Paul Kingsnorth has penned this now 38 page, it's like an ebook is what he's calling it, 38 pages where Paul Kingsnorth sits down and spells out uh, to, in crystal clear, unambiguous language, what in his opinion is not, he's not even that concerned about the C, D, O, V words. He is talking about what is really going on beneath the surface of this story that has captivated this planet for the past two years. This narrative that has completely taken over this planet. And as much as, guys, as I would like to ignore uh, this story, as much as we would, are, as much as we are all sick of this story on one level and want to get on with our lives, uh, you know, the, the, the fact remains that this narrative is the single biggest focus of the nefarious they that has ever been concocted, at least in my 62 years of life. And as a journalist or a former journalist or whatever I am, uh, I, I have been absolutely appalled, particularly at the mainstream media's treatment uh, of this narrative, their complicity in it, their acquiescence to all of this stuff. And like every one of us with a brain uh, who has any interest in digging one inch below the surface of what is really going on with this narrative, I am simply trying to figure out what the hell is going on here. And as much as I would like to ignore it, we cannot ignore this. So for the few of you uh, who, have, who have not had every brain cell beaten out of your head by uh, the mainstream media and all the rest uh, and are still trying to figure out what the hell is going on here. 
Uh, I have stumbled across this 38-page uh, essay from Paul Kingsnorth, who now, now I put the link on a couple of days ago to the first 17 pages of this, and apparently the link did not work, but I was thrilled to say I had an email from Paul today that he is reconsidered and he has decided to put the entire 38 page uh, analysis of what is going on below the surface, kind of what I would call the David Lynch uh, examination of, of what's really going on with this story. He has put it out there for free the single most spot-on analysis I have ever read about this. And so the link I am going to post really should take you there. And I realize that all of us are sick of this. But uh, if anybody on either side of the fence is still interested and trying to figure out what is going on. If you have not sold your soul to the mainstream narrative or you have not sold your brain to the right-wing conspiracy wackos and, and are still on the fence about this, trying to figure out what is going on, uh, you need to read this. It takes about one hour of your time. And uh, so I am going to read probably one or two pages from the middle of this essay, just to give you a flavor of what I need to choose my words very carefully. There will be some, uh, some rough transitions because obviously there are some words that I am not even allowed to say. And, uh, and one more time, before I start this, as Paul makes clear, I am not an anti-vaxxer. Paul Kings North states clearly he is not an anti-vaxxer. Paul Kings North and Sam Mitchell believe this V word, well, the, oh, there's two V words. We believe the virus is a real virus that is killing a lot of people. And as Paul mentions, he would never advise somebody not to take the vaccine. Okay. Like Paul, I have never told anyone, do not take the jab. I would never tell anybody that. But with that amplification and clarification, uh, we are going to dive into this essay somewhere in the middle. And this essay that I will not even breathe the title of. And uh, so very carefully treading. I'm trying to take Chris Martinson's advice. Uh, anyone who is who also wants some intelligent reporting needs to go check out Chris Martinson's uh, channel which amazingly has not been yanked down. So if Chris can do it, maybe Sam Mitchell and Paul Kingsnorth can do it. Okay, so we're going to call it the narrative. And we all know what the narrative we're talking about is. Okay. The point of the narrative is what it symbolizes and what it, meaning the narrative, the mainstream narrative surrounding this story, is being used to build. 
this is from day one what I have been trying to say. All right. I am a writer. I know how to construct stories. I know what makes them succeed or fail, and I have a nose for when a story does not hang together. This narrative is just such a story. It does not fit together, even on its own terms. Something is wrong. The surface tale does not reflect what lies beneath, and what lies beneath the narrative is what interests me now. All right, now we're going to learn about the apocalypse. We live in an apocalyptic time in the original sense of the Greek word apocalypsis or revelation. What is happening on the surface of this narrative is revealing what has always lain beneath, but which in normal times is hidden from view. All of the action, you know, with this narrative now is in the underworld, beneath the arguments about whether to do this or do that, or you know, uh, you know, all of the arguments, we don't need to rehash them here, beneath the arguments glides something older, deeper, and slower, something with all the time in the world, some great spirit whose work is to use these fractured times to reveal to us all what we need to see. Things hidden since the foundation of the modern world. This particular narrative is a revelation. It has lain bare splits in the social fabric that were always there, but could be ignored in better times. It has revealed the compliance of the legacy media and the power of Silicon Valley to curate and control the public conversation. It has confirmed the sly dishonesty of political leaders and their ultimate obeisance to corporate power. It has shown up the science for the compromised ideology that it is. Most of all, most of all, this narrative has revealed the authoritarian streak that lies beneath so many people and which always emerges in fearful times. In the, la in the last month alone, I have watched media commentators calling for censorship of their political opponents, philosophy professors justifying mass internment, and human rights lobby groups remaining silent about passports. I have watched much of the political left openly, the, I have watched much, I would say 90%, of the political left, which Paul and Sam Mitchell used to be part of, anyway, <clears throat> transition openly into the authoritarian movement it probably always was, and countless, quote, liberals campaigning against liberty as freedom 
after freedom has been taken away, I have watched intellectual after intellectual justify it all. And I'm going to take a moment here to call out my former hero, Noam Chomsky. Noam, you ought to be ashamed, brother. My, my respect for Noam Chomsky has been flushed down the toilet. I have watched intellectual after intellectual justify it all. I have been reminded of what I always knew. Cleverness has no relationship to wisdom. I have learned more about human nature in the last two years than in my preceding 47. I have learned some things about myself too, and I don't especially like them either. I have noticed my ongoing temptation to become a partisan to judge and condemn those on the other side of the question, those malicious enemies of truth with a capital T. <clears throat> I have noticed my own tendency to seek out only sources of information which confirm my beliefs. Revelation is never comfortable. Most of all, though, what <clears throat> this what this apocalypse has revealed to me is that when people are frightened, they can be easily controlled. And I want to refer you to uh, some, the, one of the very last interviews I ever did on Collapse Chronicles before I threw in the towel on interviews was, um, I actually did two interviews, but the first interview you can find here with Professor uh, Sheldon Solomon. Oh, God, uh-oh. Is that your name, brother? I hope I'm not having a senior moment. I think it's Sheldon Solomon uh, talking about death anxiety. And uh, I highly encourage you to go listen to that interview I had with Sheldon. I'm hoping I'm remembering his last name. Okay, back to Paul Kingsnorth. Most of all, what this apocalypse has revealed to me is that when people are frightened, they can be easily controlled. Control this is the story of the times. Across the world, we are seeing an unprecedented claim to control state by the forces of the state in alliance with, with the forces of corporate capital over your life and mine. All of it converges on the revealed symbol of our age, the smartphone-enabled QR code that has, with frightening speed and in near silence, become the new passport to a full human life. As ever, our tools have turned on us. Another revelation they were never our tools to begin with. We were theirs. And then after that, he, uh, he discusses the single fact that blows a cathedral-shaped hole in the strategy being pursued by governments at present and which offers a glimpse into the crypt. But of course, if 
I repeated the number one central fact as that loud-mouthed blowhard over there named Hambone Littletail did at Humpty Dumpty Tribe on Monday. Uh, I would have this video and possibly this entire channel ripped down if I were to repeat the number one central fact that completely derails the narrative in one fact. But, uh, anyway. Since we cannot discuss facts, then we just need to uh, move ahead. <clears throat> what then can be, if, if not facts, what then can be the justification for the system of technological control and monitoring which has arisen around us with curious speed and smoothness over the last year. <clears throat> uh, okay, I need to go very carefully. And what could explain the strangely similar language in which the world's governments explain and justify this system, meaning the response to the stimulus, which so many have adopted in similar ways with similar technologies in similar time frames. Uh, let's see, treading very careful, but as we are seeing on the ground, the pretext for the narrative is baseless, which is not saying the V word is not real. <clears throat> if we were operating as we pretend to be from the ground of reason, then we would be dismantling these systems at this point. Instead, we are moving deeper into them. We are being herded into a future in which scanning a code to prove you are a safe and obedient member of society may be a permanent feature of life as unquestioned as credit cards and driver's licenses. We are moving uh, I need to be very careful. Uh, by winter's end, we, we could be living in a world where, be living in a world in which the state has taken full charge of our bodies and our only chance of remaining active members of society is to submit to their every instruction and agree to permanent digital monitoring to prove our compliance. 18 months ago, anyone suggesting that this would be the direction of travel would have been dismissed as a paranoid David Icke fanboy. But over that 18 months, we have moved smoothly away from something I cannot repeat. We have normalized this and accepted it. We have not asked questions. Those who have dissented have been censored, silenced, bullied, and abused. And I cannot speak for that loudmouth hambone little tail, but I certainly can say, uh, you know, within the first couple of months of this, 
uh, uh, back in 2020, I lost hundreds of subscribers on this channel by using the words bad hair day. Uh, my own sense of foreboding is deepening daily beneath the surface of the narrative. Beneath the surface, down in those depths, I am far from the only one who can see what is emerging. The narrative does not hang together. The story does not gel, but it is doing its job nonetheless. <clears throat> It is being used to summon forth and justify an unprecedented authoritarian technocracy which is hemming us all in with no consent, no debate, and no right to opt out. In a short but momentous two years, this is who we have become. We in the West, who have spent decades, if not centuries, lecturing the rest of the world about freedom, freedom is good, and sometimes trying to bomb them into accepting it. We who invented this thing called liberalism, we who are now burying it. It did not take much, did it, for our words to be revealed as hollow. That is one out of 38 pages, and so uh, anyway, if uh, this is the last video you ever hear on Collapse Chronicles, uh, I make no apologies for this. Uh, you know, it, it is this narrative, uh, it, is it the single biggest distraction in the history of humanity distracting us away from the single biggest story in the history of humanity, which is the collapse of a planet and the extinction of the human race, or is it simply the latest little uh, Lego, the little Lego in, uh, in the monster uh, of, uh, of every reason why, sorry, we're doomed. But uh, I am going to shut up now, and I'm thinking of coming back and sharing a Terrence McKenna video. I have, for some reason, on Collapse Chronicles, not uh, introduced the works of Terrence McKenna who is the closest thing I have ever had to a guru. And, uh, but we're going to see how the words of uh, Paul Kingsnorth play with this crowd. See how many uh, subscribers I lose over this, whether I get this video pulled down, whether I get my whole channel pulled down. And uh, if all of that, I survive all that, maybe we'll come out with some Terrence McKenna material uh, tomorrow as uh, we push the boundaries of the uh, echo chamber of the Doomosphere here at Collapse Chronicles. Bye, guys.